So in this video, we will be adding some towers to the game and we will be adding these towers by clicking the tiles. Uh, for now, we'll only be placing one kind of tower, um, but later we will of course add some buttons so we can click the button and place that specific tower. But for now, just for testing, we'll just be placing one tower type. Um, and then later we'll add some prices to these buttons so that we can only place the towers when we have enough money and so on. But uh, for now, let's just take a look at how we can place the towers. To place the towers, uh, we'll have to open up the tile script. So just click on your tile script to open it up. And in here, we'll have to add a new function. And this function is called private void on mouse over. So on mouse over is executed whenever you mouse over a specific tile or a specific um, the object with uh, this script on it. So right now, all our tiles in the game has this tile script on it. So on mouse over will be executed on every single tile when we mouse over a specific one. So let's see here, if we go to the game here, you'll see that on our map, all tiles have this tile script on it, which means when I mouse over one of these tiles, this tile scripts on mouse over function will be executed. So I can take that specific tile and check the position and so on, or place a tower on that specific tile if that's what I want. So let's try to say debug.log. Um, grid position dot x plus this um, plus grid position dot y. So now it just shows the grid position in the console when we mouse over a tile. But if we run it right now, you'll see that nothing will happen. Nothing is written in the console or anything when I mouse over any of the tiles. So I think that we need to add a um, what's called a collider to the tiles. So go to your prefabs folder, click on the tiles folder, and then select all your tiles. Click add component and write box, and take the 2D box collider, and that's it. I'm not sure, maybe we should make them into triggers. We should make them into triggers, I think. So just select is trigger on all of these tiles here. Okay, so let's try to play the game again, see if something happens. And as you can see, if I open up the console, you'll see that there are lots of numbers written here. So if I mouse over this one, it says it's 1.0, it's 2.0 and so on. So now you can see that mouse over function is executed on the tiles when I mouse over one of them. And as you can see, the number keeps going up, this number here. It keeps going up as long as I have the mouse over it. So this function is ex executed as long as the mouse is over a tile. So it's not a mouse enter or anything. It's just as long as it's over. So now we know what tile we have, mouse, we have the mouse over. So, and it's very important you write this correctly, like on with capital and M with capital and so on. So it, you get this exact line of code, else Unity doesn't know what you're writing if you write on mouse over with non-capital M or something. I see some people doing that by mistake sometimes. Okay, so the debugging here can be removed. Now we are sure that this uh, functionality works. Now we can actually create a function for placing towers. So we can make a private void beneath here called place tower. This function will place a specific tower. Right now we can just say debug.log placing a tower. Just for now, we will delete this line later, but let's just check if it works. Then up here, we can say if input dot get uh, mouse button down uh, zero. So if we get mouse button zero down, if we click mouse button zero, then we say place tower. So then we execute the place tower function. So we check, are we mousing over a tile? If we are mousing over a tile, well, then we check, are we clicking the button? If we're clicking the button, well, then we are using place tower. And this one is only executed once when you click down the button and look up. So you can't just hold it down and then just place lots of towers. So let's save and see if this works as intended. Placing a tower, placing a tower. So now you can see when I mouse over one of the tiles and click the mouse button, it writes placing a tower. Now I just place 24 towers somewhere. Okay, so that's not that funny. We don't place anything yet. So let's actually make some functionality for placing a tower. So if we create a new, um, let's actually create a new manager. 
because we need to create a game manager. So let's go to our scripts and right click and create and C sharp script and write game manager. So the game manager will handle everything we need when we are playing the game. It will handle the time countdowns, the next wave, um, the currency and all these things. It will handle everything that has something to do with the gameplay. So if we click on the game manager, then our game manager also needs to be a singleton. So we inherit from singleton and write game manager. So now our game manager is already a singleton and we don't need to write all the singleton code again because we already did this. Okay, when this is done, um, we can make a private, uh, what is called game object, tower, prefab. Okay, so this is one, this tower prefab is temporary. This will be replaced with something else later because this is what just a single prefab and we will only use it for testing. Um, later we will do so that each button knows which kind of tower we need to spawn when we click it. So later this will be moved to a button. So if we click the fire tower button, then we will get a fire tower prefab, of course. So this is just for testing. But for now, let's just keep it like this. And then we can say, um, yeah, we can right click on it, click quick actions and encapsulate field. So we have a getter set. We only need a get for this one so that we can reach it from another script. Could also just make this public, but as I said, uh, that's bad practice. So let's not do it even though it's only temporary. If you can't right click and do all these things in Mono Developer or what you're using, then just write this code as it looks like right here. This is a property that we can use to access stuff from another script because this one is private and we can't access it from other scripts. We need to make it public and we're not allowed to do like this, public game object, um, tower prefab and so on. This is bad practice. So because we're not controlling whoever sets this. So instead we simply make a property so that we can just get it because no one can change it, but they can always reach it and, and get the information from it now. Okay, anyway, now we have our tower prefab. We need to set it, so let's go to our game, click create, create empty, and write game manager, and then add a component, and we need to add the game manager script to here, and then we need to go back in here and save this, and let's just wait for the edits to update, or wait, <laughs> of course we can't see it out there because it's private, so we need to go here and say serialize field, and then save. And when the field is serialized, well, then it should pop up here, as you can see. So now we have a tower prefab. Um, you can pick any tower you want to. Um, you can just go to your prefabs, go to towers, and then select any tower. I'm going to take the fire tower and drag up to here. And you can pick anything. It's just for testing, so, so it doesn't really matter what you pick. So now I have set it up so that my game manager has a reference to the tower prefab. So now that we have that, we can go to our tile script. So the smart thing here is the fact that our game manager knows about the tile prefab, uh, not the tile prefab, the tower prefab. So each tile doesn't need to have a reference to the tower prefab. If we um, needed the tiles to know about the prefab itself, then we would have to add the prefab to every single tile here. And that would take a lot of time, right? And a lot of code, if, if um, a lot of execution of code, if we needed to add the tile pref uh, the tile prefab to every single tile so that it could spawn a tower. So instead of doing that, we simply just added it to the game manager. So the game manager knows about the tile, uh, about the tower. So the tower, tower <laughs> okay, I'm mixing my words here, tile and tower, so that the tile can access the game manager to get a tower instead of having every single tower on the tiles. Hope that makes sense. Maybe I was like um, stumbling on my own words. Okay, so now we should try to place a tower. So we can say instantiate game manager dot instance dot not instantiate dot instance instance dot tower prefab. And where do you want to spawn it? Well, we want to spawn it on the tiles position. So just transform the position 
And does it, do we want to rotate the tower? No, we don't. So we say quaternion dot identity. So now we should be placing a tower on a tile when we click it. There's no limitations. We can place 100 towers in one tile right now if we want to. But let's uh, try to save this and jump back into Unity. Rerun the game. And if we click a tile, boom, then you can see we are placing a tower. But as you can see, the tower is placed um, in the top right corner. Uh, if we do like this and we do like this, then you'll see the center of the tower is actually placed in the top left uh, top left corner of the tile. And that's not intended. We, of course, want the tower to be placed like this. So we need to fi do something to fix this. So to do this, we actually have to make a custom pivot point to our um, our what's called our sprites, because as you can see here, when we place a tower, you'll see that the fire tower has a totally different height and different dimensions than our um, our tile. So if we would say that now uh, we just move the pivot point to the top left corner, well then the tower will be placed like this instead of on the actual tile, um, and we can't move the center of the uh, tile or the pivot point to the center of the tile because then we'll also have like a, a tower that goes over the edge a little here. So we have to make a custom pivot point so that tower's placement fits with the center of the tile. So to do so, we go to the sprites uh, folder, go to um, towers and then go to fire idle for example. In fire idle, we need to select every single um, sprite here from top to bottom, shift, hold shift down and click the last one. And then we have to say pivot and they say then say custom. Okay, so I've already tested this out and I've written down at, that the custom um, pivot point that fits this is minus 0 0.06 as X and 0 0.6 as Y. And then when you've done that, you click the apply button. So that's the fire tower. If you're using something else, let's try ice. Let's see what I've written for ice. That's the same, zero, minus 0 0.06 and 0 0.6 also. We can also do that right here, right away. Select all of them and say pivot point custom minus 0 0.06 and minus 0 0.6. And then poison, we can also take that now. And if we select all the poison idols, that's the same. So take the top one. I forgot to click apply before, so remember to click apply on all the ice towers. Select the poison ones. And pivot point should be custom minus 0 0.06 and minus 0 0.6. There we go. And just for good measure, let's just test the storm tower if it's the same also the same so you can basically just put this for every everything single one of them custom minus 0 0.6 0 06 and my 0 0.6 just and apply okay so when you have done this we would also need to do this for the attack at some point um, but we're not going to use the attack right now but when we get there I'll I'll do it you can also do it now if you want to so now when the pivot point on the fire idle has been changed to this minus 0 0.6, then let's try to click in the tile. And there you have it. Now you can see that our tower is placed exactly in the center of the tile. Um, maybe not exactly, but that's what I did when I, I tested it out to get the values. If you don't feel like the tower is placed correctly, well, then you can always go and change these values here so that it fits your game, your needs better. But I think these numbers are totally fine. So now we can actually click on tiles to place towers um, in our game. Towers doesn't do anything right now. We can place more towers on one tile. Um, nothing should um, stop us from that, as you can see here. <laughs> now I just place so many towers on top of each other, so it's idling with fire up here, it looks crazy. Uh, anyway, now we can place the towers. Um, and in the next video, I think we will add some more functionality to this so that we can click different buttons and then place uh, place towers as you want them to. Um, and we'll also have a look at something about the ordering of the towers because 
sometimes if you place a tower here let me zoom in here if we place a tower here there's nothing stopping this tower for being behind this one if the order in layer say it's um this this order in layer here goes underneath the actual uh, tower above so here as you can see so that this tower here is rendered behind this one so we'll also write some code to make sure that this tower the lower the towers are in the grid they will uh, the higher they will be rendered so that lower towers will always be rendered on top of towers behind them so this tower down here will not get, get clipped off like this but it will have um, the right order in layer so it places on top of the towers behind it I hope that was understandable um, yeah, so thanks for watching this video and remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page so uh, all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways. You can support me on Patreon by clicking the top link um, where you can get all these um, assets and all Unity projects that I've ever created on uh, on this uh, YouTube channel. And you can also click the bottom link to get any of my projects as a standalone product. Also remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already. So thank you very much for watching.